What's going on, my awesome friend? It's your boy, Matthew Bivens here. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for click and play on this episode and just chilling with having it all. I appreciate it. So I wanted to jump on here and share with you a couple of updates on some things before we get into today's episode and all great things, I absolutely promise. And last week I did a rebroadcast and I'm actually going to be doing rebroadcast episodes throughout the rest of the month. And it's because Sarah and I have been working super, super hard on this incredible new package course product that we're creating for our other show, Doing It At Home. And we've been working on this for, it's been over a year, and it really has ramped up as our launch date is this week, this third week in March. And so we've just been putting in time and energy to create this really, really amazing resource that's going to help current and future parents. So if that applies to you, then just stay tuned because as soon as it launches, I'm going to be letting you all know because you might be interested in checking it out as well. And so as a result of all this hard work, I'm taking the family on a little vacation. Actually, it's, on, it's a big vacation. <laughs> we're going out of town for, for over a week and we're just super excited to spend that quality time together, to be outdoors, to be in the sunshine, to be at the beach. And so that's why we're going to do some, some episodes from the archives throughout the rest of March because I'm going to be out of town. And what's really beautiful is that there's so many fantastic, fantastic Having It All episodes. And today, I'm really excited to bring you a conversation that this is back in 2019. And this episode is titled Sexual Confidence and Male Performance Anxiety, a Vulnerable Sex Conversation Inspired by Jason Rogers. And so in 2021, you know, I did a, a brand new thing, the, the new themes for episodes of the podcast. And the third Tuesday of the month is typically where Sarah and I jump on and we have a conversation relating to couples and relationships. Well, I wanted to bring this episode about sexual confidence and male performance anxiety, which is a solo episode. It's just me. But I wanted to bring it on this Tuesday because your relationship with yourself, with your body, with your sexuality has such a tremendous impact on your relationships with other people, particularly that primary intimate sexual relationship that you have with your partner. So what I'm going to be sharing today in today's episode is, you know, I'm peeling back some of the layers of the relationship that I've had with myself and my body and my sexuality. And I talked to you about some of the introspection that I've undergone over the last several years to, to learn things about how I was relating to myself and how I was relating to my body and to uncover some of the, the paradigms and the belief systems that I've had around sexuality that has impacted my sexual confidence, that has impacted and created male performance anxiety. So I really want to, to share this with you all today because I want to encourage you to do your own internal deep dive, do your own introspection to see where and how some of the things that you believe that impact the quality of your relationships, where do those things come from? You know, what is, what is the origin? What stories are you telling yourself? What beliefs are you buying into and wearing on that may not be serving you and may be having a detrimental impact on your relationships? That's what I want to encourage you to do today. So you're going to hear me talk about some very vulnerable things, some very raw things, and it's beautiful because that's what we got to dig into and, and, and get into to really allow it to come up to ultimately release it or heal it or recontextualize it so that we can truly have it all. Because having it all just isn't about, you know, making a lot of money, having a nice career, owning nice things, you know, having the, the partner and the family and all that. Nah, it's about your relationship to all of it. Right. Because you can have all those things, but not relate to them powerfully. So I'm holding space for you to be able to have the most amazing, thriving, deep, intimate, beautiful, sexy, loving relationships you possibly can. And in order to do that, you got to look at your stuff. You got to be willing to face it. You got to be willing to shift your perspective on those things. And so that's why we're bringing this episode to you today. It's going to be really amazing. I would love to hear from you if this conversation brings stuff, any stuff up with you, if you have questions, if you just want to share feedback. And also, 
If you want to make suggestions on other episodes like this, other conversations that I can get into on the podcast, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm at Matthew at MatthewBivens.com. I'm also on Instagram at Matthew underscore Bivens. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Sexual confidence and male performance anxiety. A vulnerable sex conversation inspired by Jason Rogers. Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's up? What's up? Welcome to the Having It All podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens. I am a transformational specialist, balanced lifestyle coach, and host of this podcast where we have conversations about what it looks like to have it all, an abundant, loving life. Welcome to the show, everybody. If this is your first time joining us, then you picked a hell of an episode. (laughs) You sure did. I'm so, so happy that you're here. And yes, today's conversation is powerful, it's raw, it's transparent, talking about something that a lot of people are afraid to address. A lot of people are afraid to talk about this. I'm talking about sexual confidence and performance anxiety. And specifically, I'm talking about men today. I'm talking about male sexual confidence issues, male performance anxiety issues. And this entire conversation, not only is it something that um, I can relate to personally, but the whole conversation was actually inspired by this this blog article I, I read, just really amazing, courageous, vulnerable, and transparent article. And it's uh, it was on men's health, and it was titled, I won an Olympic medal, but my toughest battle was in the bedroom. And it's it's very, very um, just eye-opening, and, and it's incredible. Uh, the guy who wrote it, his name is Jason Rogers, and like the title suggests, he's a, an Olympian. And he, you know, he won an Olympic medal and did all these great things in sports, but his biggest challenges were in the bedroom. And so he just bears it all. Like, honestly, he just spills, you know, all of his, his experience out in this article. So I read it and I knew that I wanted to bring this conversation to the podcast because I know that a lot of people, I know everybody listening is, is touched by this conversation in some way. You know, if you're a man, there's probably going to be some parts of this that you can relate to personally. And if you're a woman then you have probably had a partner or a friend or you know of a man in your life that has has maybe experienced these challenges firsthand or you know you know that they could benefit from the healing aspects of having conversations like this so this one is really for everybody and i if you're able to right now like let's say you're at the office or you know you're you're sitting down or something if you can go and read this article before we get into the conversation, I highly, highly um, recommend that you do. It'll just, you know, I'm going to do a recap later on in the episode. I'll recap the article and then I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, but if you can read it for yourself, then you can um, hear it all for yourself. So again, it's in Men's Health and the, artic- the article is titled, uh, where was it? What did I tell you? It was, I won an Olympic medal, but my toughest battle was in the bedroom. And it's by Jason Rogers. So go check that out. Let's kick things off with some magic. Magic, magic, magic. I'm not talking about Disney magic. I'm not talking about magicians. I have a a really close friend who's this incredible magician. And although he does wonderful magic, I'm not talking about type of magic today. I'm talking about how you have influenced self, others, or life in an empowering way. And I'm going to share an example of how I have influenced myself, others, or life in an empowering way. And then I want you to reflect Right? Reflect on the magic that you've created in your life. Because the more you reflect on it, the more you realize how freaking powerful you are, how much magic you, you are creating. So my magic was yesterday. Um, Sarah and I, we had this really, really amazing work brainstorm session. Um, Sarah is currently creating and is about to launch this truly, truly amazing membership site called Orgasmic Mama. And it's a site... And it's, it's content that's, that she's creating for mamas to learn how to connect with their turned on, vibrant, orgasmic selves. And it's truly incredible. It's, it's, it's perfect that that's part of my magic, right? Talking about the orgasmic mama 
in an episode where we're talking about sex. So yeah, Sarah's been rocking it and putting this thing together, and I've been working on her with her on it. Um, so yesterday we were just mapping out some of the last content pieces. We were looking at the content that's already been recorded, uh, putting together the plan for the launch. And this thing is launching on Mother's Day of this year, so May 13th. So just under two weeks is when Orgasmic Mama launches. And so just magical seeing this come together over the past several months, um, seeing Sarah just really, really lean into this, step into this. And, and you know, it's amazing because it's, it's called Orgasmic Mama. So, you know, there's got to be, you can't, you can't have a, 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 a product with that name if you're not walking the talk. So Sarah has really just been, just been incredible with her own sexual goddess self. And it's been beautiful to watch that and to experience that. And now for her to take all of these things and put it into this, this, uh, this membership site is just truly awesome. So that was my magic, spending time with her yesterday working on Orgasmic Mama. And if anyone's interested, by the way, um, there's a, uh, you can sign up now to be notified as soon as it launches on the 13th. You go to sarahbivens.com slash O-M, O-M for Orgasmic Mama. That's Sarah, S-A-R-A-H, bivens.com slash O-M, and you can learn about Orgasmic Mama. So that was my magic. Now is the time for you to reflect on your magic. Where have you influenced self, others, or life in an empowering way recently? Could have been today, yesterday, over the weekend, whenever. Take a moment, pause the episode, reflect on your magic. I want to send a little bit of love out there, listener love, because I love each and every one of you. I love that you share you know, in these conversations with me. I love that you give your, your time to you know, absorbing this information, just participating in all of this, because I think the more that you know, we're talking about having it all, the more we're talking about sex, the more that we're talking about healing, then, then that's really going to shift the consciousness of the globe. And I truly, truly believe that. So got to send that love back out to you all. Today's listener love goes out to David. Now, David uh, has been a listener for several years, and we actually were able to connect on the phone two years ago. And that was awesome. But what was really cool is that yesterday we reconnected over the phone and we had a, a catch up call. And it was just really, really cool to see um, everything David's been creating and doing in his life over the past two years. And, uh, you know, when we first connected, um, he and his wife were pregnant. And so I got a chance to hear, you know, just how the past two years have been raising his little one. And uh, it's just really, really amazing. You know, David is a father, a husband, entrepreneur. We have very similar roles. Uh, both of us work from home and, you know, we juggle all those different roles. And it's just, it, w- it was really magical to have that conversation uh, with David. And what I thought was really cool, uh, David, if you're listening, that you are, are seeking to create that thriving relationship with your wife and queen. And that I thought was really, really beautiful because that's what we talked about two years ago. And so, you know, the awareness that that relationship is going to have such an impact on all the different roles in your life and different areas of your life. And so, you know, treating your queen as a queen, that was something we talked about. And it was just beautiful to connect with you, David. And so thank you so much. If anybody else wants to connect with me, I would love to do that. I have a goal of connecting with anybody who's listened to more than two episodes of the podcast. So that could look like an Instagram message or an email. So you can hit me up, Matthew underscore Bivens on Instagram. You can connect with me there. Or you can shoot me an email, mattcbivens at gmail.com. I'd love to just say what's up, maybe receive some feedback on the show, receive some topic suggestions, whatever. Let's connect. All right, before we jump into the episode... Just wanted to let everybody know that I'm going to be doing a relaunch of the Having It All Blueprint course, which is uh, the flagship course for the Having It All product. And when I say relaunch, what I mean is that I'm going to be taking a new class of people through the course. So back in March, the course officially launched, and there was a, a great group of folks when we all went through the course together. And it's been it's been um, live, like the course has been up, anybody can join. Uh, but it was in March that I was walking everybody through week by week. I'm going to be doing that again. And so this course is really for you if you've been just unsure about your passion or your direction, if you felt confused about your life and where you're headed, if you've been if you've been feeling unclear or unfulfilled or unexcited about your life, um, or if you are unsure of what to actually do, right? Like 
maybe you're okay, you're like, okay, I, I, I have these feelings of not feeling fulfilled and not feeling excited. And, you know, I can read a blog article about how to find my purpose, but it's pretty vague. Like, I just don't know what to do. Like, you, you, know, you know you want to do, but you don't know what to do. Then the blueprint is for you because the blueprint walks you through all of those things to help you feel super clear about what's most important to you, fired up about your life, you know, so clear about what it is, who it is that you need to be to go and create the life that you want and create the experiences that you want. And at the other end of the blueprint, once you complete it, you know, you're going to have confidence, confidence in what it looks like to live your greatest life, confidence in how to go about creating the life of your dreams. And you're just going to have so much excitement and waking up each day to create and serve and explore and just simply enjoy life. So I'm going to be doing another launch of the Having It All Blueprint. I will let you all know when that happens. It's going to be in the next upcoming weeks. And so that means you can jump into the course and then week by week, I'll be going through with you and uh, just kind of working with you through the different sections. That's coming up very, very soon. Stay tuned for that. Let's get into this conversation. Let's do it. Now, once again, if you're in a space and you can read the article before you listen, I recommend just so that you can read all of uh, Jason's just sharing, his really open, honest sharing. So the article is again on men's health. Uh, You can type in, I won an Olympic medal, but my toughest battle was in the bedroom. Jason Rogers. I think if you just go to um, Google, you type in Jason Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S, men's health. It'll probably pull it up there. So give that a read. But really, I want to first kick off. I have a couple things I want to do. I want to talk about why. I want to share with you why I'm talking about this. Why are we bringing this conversation to the podcast? Um, then I want to do a quick recap of the article. The particular passages I want to read are ones that really st- stood out to me that I think are going to have an impact on you. Um, then I'm going to share a little bit of my own experience with this stuff. And then I'm going to talk about what has helped me. What have I done to create massive transformation in my, in my life, in my sexual confidence? What have I done to create massive healing, a lot of sexual healing? You know. And um, I'm going to share with you some of those things. And then I'll, I'll close things off by talking about Men, like for men, what can you do if you're feeling this way? And then women, what can you do if your partner or somebody is important in your life is feeling this way? So I'm going to touch a lot of ground in today's conversation. All right, so first up, why am I talking about this? The reason why I'm bringing this conversation to the podcast and why I bring any sexual conversation to the podcast is because I believe sexual energy is vital to your overall health and well-being. I believe it's vital. And it's not talked about enough. We don't talk about this stuff enough, you know, and, and as a result, because like sex plays such a huge part in, in our development, in our childhood. And, and as we come up through the years, it's such a big thing. We have, you know, I think all of us can think back to major, major moments in our lives that have to do around sex and our sexual identity and sexual experiences. And for a lot of people, those moments are not empowering. They're not. And so they imprint on us on those young, impressionable ages and then we have these, these traumas. Some of them are traumas with a capital T. Some are traumas with a lowercase t. But they stay with us, and we don't heal them. And as a result, we carry so much shame, so much guilt, so much judgment, so much fear. And we have all of these incredibly, incredibly unhealthy unha- attachments to our sexual partners. And it impacts our lives. It does. It impacts your health. It impacts your life in ways that so many people are completely unaware of. And what I have found and discovered and have been taught and have experienced is that sex can be a space where massive healing happens. The bedroom can be a space where healing on the deepest level occurs. It can be a space where you learn how to cultivate pure joy in your life, joy that can touch every other part of your life. You know, it's the bedroom is where you can really, truly feel connected to self, connected to others, connected to spirit, to source, to God, connected to life in very deep and very profound ways. But again, we're not talking about this stuff. And I wouldn't be talking about this if I didn't experience it firsthand. Like there's so much of what I'm going to share with you in this article by Jason Rogers that I, I've, I've been there. Like he was describing me in so many ways. And now to be completely on, on like a very other end of that spectrum, like I wouldn't be having this conversation if I didn't experience it. I had very low faith in any of this stuff 
until I actually experienced it. And so I personally want to shift the conversation around sex. I want to shift it. Like we have this Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing, right? Like we feel so ashamed about sex and we don't want to talk about it openly. You know, parents don't want to talk about it with their kids. They want to shield their kids from anything sexual. You don't want to talk about anything with your partner. You don't want to talk about it in a healthy way with your friends. Let's just keep it all closed off. Let's be isolated in it. We don't want to be open. We're embarrassed. We're reserved. That's, that's one, one aspect. And then on the flip side, the, the Mr. Hyde is like, we're surrounded by sex. There's so many sexual conversations happening out in, in the media, out in culture. There's sexual messaging all over the place. I mean, you ever walk through a mall in America and pass by a Victoria's Secret? Like, it's just oozing with sex. But I, you could probably sit there in front of that store and people watch, and I bet you you'll see people who are like shuffling behind, you know, by, and you'll see the men like kind of glancing over to check out the posters, and you'll see parents covering their kids' eyes. It's like we're surrounded by this stuff, but we don't want to look at it. But those sexual messages have a huge, huge impact on our lives. It's like we're fascinated by sex, and we're terrified about it. And because of that, because there's so much fear and there's so much shame and all of that stuff, we completely miss the power that sex and sexual energy has to, like I've been saying, to heal, to manifest, to create joy. And so that's why I'm talking about this today. And right now in this conversation, it's about those, those, those deep fears and those judgments and the shame that men feel. Because men are just, you know, creatures that don't talk. We just don't like to open up. It's the machismo, macho bullshit. We don't want to talk, right? Especially about sex. Especially about sexual performance. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, no. There's dudes right now who are sweating because they're like, oh, shit. We're about to talk about something sexual. I better make sure that I'm like, none of my boys can see this. I don't want to make sure anybody can see this tab that's open on my computer. Or let me, let me like, you know, dim the screen on my phone so nobody else sees it. It's just because we carry all that, that shame around. So, ah, okay. That's why we're talking about this stuff. All right, let's recap this article a little bit because I thought it was freaking fascinating. So Jason Rogers is an Olympian. He's a fencer. So he, where did he win his medals? Let me see. Looks like he won in 2008, wherever the Olympics was in 2008. I don't know. Uh, so he's Olympian and, you know, badass athlete and super driven and, you know, goal oriented, like, you know, alpha male dude. Right. Because that's that's the image of the Olympic male, an alpha male dude. Right. And so that's the persona. But what was really going on beneath him is from a from a young age, from like high school, he started to experience erectile dysfunction issues. So he would get into a sexual encounter with a woman and they would be kissing and smooching and doing their thing. And, you know, he might start to get hard and then her hand goes down his pants and whoop, erection goes away shriveled up and that's what was happening again and again and again over and over and over and jason talks about this i mean the article starts the bulge in my pants i expected was nowhere to be found that's how he starts this article i'm telling you he, he goes deep like he opens up so from a young age he had these 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 encounters that were really just fucking with his ego and fucking with his manhood you know, apologizing, I'm sorry, I'm nervous, right? And, and just feeling shame from, from a young age. And he says, there's one quote that I, a passage that I highlighted. He said, my adolescent brain had already drawn its own conclusion. I am not enough. I am not enough. My fear and worry reduced me to a sweaty, fumbling mess. And so that was the story that Jason had, that he wasn't enough. Because he wasn't able to perform the way that he wanted to or the way that he thought he was supposed to. And so the shame set in, right? The, the, the being incomplete. And he talks about, he goes on and read further down. He says, the way I felt in that moment, alone, embarrassed, ashamed, was somehow less painful than the unbearable prospect of failing all over again. So, you know, he's sharing all these different sexual experiences that he's having. And then he goes on to talk about some, some stats, which I thought were really fascinating. He talks about erectile dysfunction and how that term, when you hear erectile dysfunction, you typically think of older guys, right? Like older men experience erectile dysfunction. But 
He talks about how a lot of men under 40 grapple with the condition. Um, estimates range from 2% to about 40%. And here was something that, I mean, I keyed in on this stuff, and you're going to understand why. He says, the root of the problem can be medical, but more often, the cases are deemed to be psychological in nature. And then there's a quote, anxiety is the enemy of arousal. And this is coming from a sex counselor and author. Failing to perform, especially during early sexual experiences, can cause what is called trauma with a lowercase t. Remember I was saying that earlier? Trauma with a lowercase t. It isn't the same as, say, becoming the victim of a violent crime, but the stress, guilt, and shame that result from these developmental traumas with the lowercase t are stored in the body and brain and can lead to a self-feeding cycle. And that right there was me. That was my experience. A ton of anxiety. So much anxiety when it came to sex. After a first, the first few experiences that I had, which, you know, by the way, were almost always under the influence of alcohol. Those were my first sexual experiences. I was drinking. Drinking with my girlfriend at a party. And that's how things went down. And so after a handful of these, these initial sexual experiences, you know, I started to develop a lot of anxiety. And like it says here in the article, anxiety is the enemy of arousal. And so what developed was that, that lowercase t trauma. You know, and, I, and I, I, I get why it's lowercase t trauma, right? Because that's a word that, you know, it's a heavy word. You throw that trauma word around, you know, but I understand the lowercase t trauma has to do with that stress and the guilt and the shame that comes from those early, early experiences that you have. And that self-feeding cycle, that right there is, is, is a really important thing to understand, you know, because what ends up happening was when we have this self-feeding cycle. So you experience anxiety about an upcoming sexual encounter. That anxiety then impacts your level of arousal. So when you go into that sexual encounter, you don't perform the way that you want to. Your performance confidence gets shot. Now you have, you have validation that you aren't enough, right? Going back to what Jason had wrote in the article. You aren't enough. And that not enoughness then feeds the anxiety, right? So the anxiety messes with the arousal and the ability to perform the way that you want, which fucks with your performance confidence, which then reinforces that whole idea that I'm not enough and just keeps going around and around and around and around. And that's what happens, men. That's what happens. That's what happens to us. And so Jason goes on to talk about um, some of the some of his Olympic or his his athletic uh, feats and not really feats, but just experiences. And what he does really well in the article is connects how the conversation about masculinity and manhood from his sexual experiences started to mess with him when he was, you know, in his sport, like started to fuck with him in his sport. And he talks about a. um a match that he lost. And he even says, my opponent, a cocksure Italian. And he says, imagine the quintessential soap opera stud that makes even your grandma hot and bothered. <laughs> that made me laugh. But he talks about just how like he felt intimidated, right? When he was now competing in his sport, all the things that were going on in the bedroom were fucking with him so that he felt intimidated when now he gets in the, in the ring or the arena or whatever, whatever it is for fencing. And, I highlighted this part. He said, quivering as thick tears sloshed down my cheeks, a single deluded question tore through my mind. If I can feel this impotent when I'm supposed to be strong, how can I possibly respect myself as a man? Damn. This is some real shit, everybody. This is some real shit. You know, and I think a lot of men like have these sorts of conversations. Like, how can I respect myself as a man? If I'm not able to perform, if I'm not able to satisfy her or satisfy him, how can I respect myself as a man? That's the stuff that, you know, these are the stories that we just start to run around in our, in our, in our minds. I'm not enough. I'm not a man. And, you know, it's, it's tragic and it sucks. And like Jason illustrates, it impacts your life outside of the bedroom. You know, like it was fucking up his ability to 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 show up as an athlete in the sport that he had trained his whole life for. And this was in the um, Athens Olympics. So he was in the Olympics and he got beat and they started to mess with his, you know, his, his internal conversation. So the article goes on, talks more about um, 
getting him getting potentially wanting to leave the sport, uh, but then going back and training and going to the Olympics in what is it, Beijing? Is that what I read here? I thought I said I thought I read something like that. That was two thousand eight, maybe. Um, and then after you know they win a medal, right? So he gets back on top in his sport, and there's a picture of him here on the podium with his teammates, and they're all smiling and they're all happy. He wins this medal, and then all of a sudden it's like the blitz of of attention that comes after you win the Olympics. You know, it's like new opportunities for sponsors and and modeling gigs and all sorts of stuff and parties and galas and fashion shows and all that stuff that happens. And he talks about, uh, you know, Jason talks about meeting um, a woman at a club out in Hollywood. And he has some Viagra now. Yeah, he got Viagra for his erectile dysfunction. And so he pops a Viagra and he he ha- he's you know he has this experience where it just it wasn't the way that he thought right and what is really fascinating about this is now he's an olympian he's an olympic gold medal winner right so he's this alpha dude and he has this thought that runs through his head after this quote unquote failed sexual experience right he's supposed to be the top of the world but his thought is i'm an olympian and i can't even fuck I mean, this stuff, it just runs deep. It runs deep. And so there's a couple of more uh, passages that I really want to read um, that, that struck me. And this one's, this one's big. Pay attention to this one. Shame is a toxic emotion that leads men to keep their sexual troubles to themselves. A survey commissioned by the UK-based, a UK-based pharmacy chain reported that 43% of men said they didn't feel they could discuss the issue openly with friends. 43% of men felt that they couldn't discuss it openly with friends. And listen to this part. And over a quarter of men would prefer to break up with a partner than to seek treatment from a doctor. Yeah, I'll read that again. A quarter of men would rather be like, you know what? Let's just end this relationship because I don't want to talk about this. And this is just too much for me. Than to go and seek treatment from a doctor. A quarter. Yeah. A quarter. Jason writes, if these numbers shock you, they shouldn't. Just look at how Western culture shapes the dialogue around sexual performance. Hollywood celebrates young, virile heroes. Porn paints an unattainable portrait of male sexual performance. Even a telemedicine startup called Roman, it promises to ship men ED medication in discreet packaging. That's just reinforcing the shame, everybody. Ship the medication in discreet packaging and to their friend's door. Don't have it come to my house. I don't want anybody to know that I suffer from this, that I experienced this. Through these influences, men learn implicitly that sharing their troubles will only compromise their masculinity and lead to embarrassment. Listen up. This is why I wanted to bring this conversation to the podcast because I know thousands of people are going to hear this right now. And... We as men and just as people were surrounded by all this messaging that we're not supposed to talk about this. We're not supposed to talk about this stuff. You're supposed to feel shame and judgment if you're anything other than that picture that Hollywood paints or that picture that porn paints. And the the guilt and the shame and the isolation, it's just reinforced in so many different ways. And that's why I wanted to shine some light on it because fuck that. Fuck that. Because the way that we feel about ourselves in the bedroom, it's going to impact every other area of life. It does. This Olympian right here is telling you, it messed with me while I was you know, on the biggest stage. That little conversation of, I'm not a man, I'm not enough. It just buries in there and it does its damage. And so I don't give a shit if anybody out there is having thoughts about me being less of a man right now. And I don't believe you are. But I'm simply saying that because, you know what? I lived so much of my life in shame around myself sexually. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into a little bit more of my internal conversation later on. But it's just so important that we talk about these things and we bring them out into the open. And, you know, men, it's like it's important that we seek out healthy conversations around this or seek out people who can hold a space that we can actually talk about this. Because not everybody is able to hold a powerful space to have this conversation. They just aren't because their sexual maturity is low. 
if you bring this conversation to somebody with very low sexual maturity, they're just not powerful enough in that to be able to hold a space and have that conversation with you and just to listen and to ask, you know, ask healthy questions, right? Because they might be dealing with their own judgment around it. And the thing is, if you've ever had an experience in your life where you wanted to bring something to a friend or a family member or just somebody and it was met by, you know, anything other than than a patient, loving space, then it's really easy to, to reinforce those ideas about yourself that there's something wrong with you, well, that they're, they're, they don't want to talk about it. And, and, you know, it's clear that this is a bad thing to talk about. I shouldn't be talking about this. And it just reinforces those stories. I'm going to get into a little bit more of that when I talk about what we can do. If you're experiencing what Jason has experienced, what you can do about it. But I just wanted to plant that right there. So what is really awesome, though, is in this article, Jason goes on to talk about how, you know, his experience at that with, with the girl from the Hollywood Club, it, it led him to do something that he'd never done before, that he never thought to do. And that was to talk to his dad, to talk to his dad about it. And he, Jason says, my resistance was never due to a bad relationship between us. Although he traveled a lot for work and took a more reserved approach to parenting, he could at times be very dad-like and supportive. And the resistance also extended beyond the natural allergy every young boy has to talking to his parents about sex. Jason's resistance had, had more to do with the fear of revealing to the very man that gave me life something that I thought compromised my own manhood. I mean, can you relate to that, fellas? You don't want to talk to to your father or somebody, you know, about this stuff because it feels like it compromises your manhood. And that's a fascinating take that Jason had, like not wanting to talk to his father because the, his father was the guy who gave him life. It's just really, really, I mean, if anything, this gives you an idea of, of what our mind does, what our ego does to build up the resistance, to build up the fear. It creates these stories. Well, he gave me life. He passed his manhood down to me. I could never talk to him about something that is potentially compromising to that manhood. Like, that's the shit that we make up. And I love the fact that Jason's just being so open about sharing this stuff. So Jason went on and had a conversation with his dad. And he says that relief just rushed over him as he started to, as his dad like his dad held a space and his dad started to reveal his own battles with sexual performance anxiety. And that's amazing right there. So Jason goes on to say that, you know, he started to build some confidence after having conversations with his father. And that led to other conversations happening. He says that I began having regular sessions with a psychologist and grew more comfortable peeling back the layers around my feelings. I found and invested in new male friends that I could count on to react to my revelations without defensiveness or self-recrimination. When the issue arose in new relationships, I learned to be honest and share rather than shut down my emotions. This is part of the solution, everybody. And I bolded this part where Jason wrote, I found and invested in new male friends. Because guess what? The people that you're currently surrounding yourself with, they may not be the people who can hold the space for this conversation to happen. They might be people who are reinforcing those unhealthy beliefs about what it is to, you know, to be a man, what a man's supposed to be like. They might be the very ones who are just feeding that fear in your mind. So, fellas, you might need to go out and find some new friends and invest in those friendships so that you can have space and people to talk to. And as I was saying earlier, you know, some people just aren't there. They just don't have that, that sexual maturity to have this conversation. And, that, and that's what Jason writes. He said, you know, find male friends that he can count on to react to his revelations without defensiveness or self-recrimination. Because if somebody is feeling these, those feelings for themselves and they just have very low maturity around it, they might get defensive. They may not want you to talk about it because you're talking about something that they're experiencing and they're not in a space to be able to, to address it. So you might have to go and find new groups of friends or find communities, find online communities where you can open up to and just share and talk about it. Powerful, powerful stuff. So Jason ends the article by talking about how grateful he is for his experiences. Even though he can look back on them and get frustrated at times, he's still grateful for the experiences because they taught him to be considerate, 
introspective, and suspicious of hubris, both within himself and others. And he closes by saying, like, hey, listen, you know, although I'm sharing all of this stuff and it sounds like, you know, I'm this big confident dude, <laughs> I'm scared as hell sharing this because so many people are going to read it. And I thought that was that was pretty bold. Like, even though I'm terrified that family is going to read this who don't know any of this, this, these parts about me, like, he still put it out there. Still put it out there. And he closes by saying, I'm comforted by the fact that I now know that I can be competitive and gentle, strong and sensitive, confident and vulnerable. None of those apparent contradictions make me any less of a man. Powerful, bold, beautiful. I love it. And I'm so happy that I stumbled across this article because, again, it there's so many parallels with things that I've experienced. And I know there's so many people out there who are experiencing the same exact thing. So now just a little bit about my own experience. I I shared, you know, some stuff while I was recapping the article. But for me, it wasn't erectile dysfunction. It was very, very low self-confidence. Like my sexual confidence was very low. And and for me, my biggest fear was having a, a, a premature ejaculation, like coming too fast. Right. My that was my my big thing. And my anxieties, it just it it sped up that orgasm almost every time. And so I would do all these different things to try to last longer. And you know what happened is I started to develop this really unhealthy relationship with my penis. Yeah. Like I would get mad at him. I would blame him for what's going on. I'd be frustrated. You know? And I really at the time was not really un- fully understanding that the things that were happening weren't physical things that were going on. You know, it wasn't like I needed to, you know, train myself more. It had way more to do with the things that were going on in between my ears. And so, you know, I've talked in the past <clears throat> on this podcast about um, my attachment to porn, going back to very young, nine, ten years old, being exposed to porn and just starting that habit that lasted for a long, long time of a very unhealthy relationship to porn. So there was a lot of comparison between myself and the people I saw in porn. These men that I would see go 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, you know, or seemingly, I have no idea, but that was the story that I painted in my mind that, you know, a a, a true, strong, powerful man, like a real man, does not have premature ejaculation challenges. Like a real man, when he wants to come, he comes. If he doesn't want to come, he doesn't come. And he's like strong, like hung as a horse. Like you should see my, the gesture I'm doing right now as I'm saying that. And like that erection is just hard as hell. Then, and it's for the entire, you know, two hours. Like that was the story that I had in my mind. And so, you know, it, it, it impacted me in a lot of ways. Like I just felt intimidated by sex and, you know, it, it impacted me pursuing relationships. You know, it messed with my confidence when it came to just talking to women. And, when it came to like in the bedroom, like when I did have a girlfriend and, and we did have sex, it was just really interesting thing where I would feel on top of the world if, if we had a lovemaking session that was anything like what I saw in porn, right? And like the videos that I was watching, they weren't loving, you know, gentle. It was just like, pop, pop. it was like that, right? And so if I did anything like that, and she had an orgasm, I fell on top of the world. And I didn't come first. Oh my gosh. That I was I was the king. I was the king for like five minutes. <laughs> because afterwards those those fears were creeping. Well, that was just one time. And maybe it was because you did this, that, and the other. And you know, you had some caffeine. So maybe it was the caffeine and you masturbated earlier. So that was probably it too. You know, like all of that stuff would go in my mind. But then if I ever had a sexual encounter, which was most of the time, that was not like what I saw in porn, which was like again, ninety percent of the time, then I would feel less than a man. I feel like less than a man. And so I had zero conversations about this stuff with anybody. Nobody. I did not talk to anybody about this. Not my my father or my buddies or my girlfriends. Or nothing. Nope. And I was very, very shameful. I felt very isolated and very lonely I felt like I was, you know, one of the only people that I knew who was experiencing anything. Um, there's a lot of judgment. I already talked about like judgment towards my penis and just judgment towards myself. 
um, and just, again, felt very intimidated sexually. And I would try all the tricks because at the time I didn't recognize that there was deeper things going on. So I would try all these little tricks to try to last longer. You know, I would masturbate hours before I thought I would have sex. And I don't remember when this movie came out, but I remember in the movie Something About Mary, there's that scene, that clean the pipes scene. You know, he's about to, the main character's about to go on a date with Mary and his buddy's like, all right, did you get the car gassed up? Did you got, you know, money in your wallet? Cool. Did you clean your pipes? And he's like, what? He's like, yeah, did you clean your pipes? And he's like, you got to jerk off before you go on a, on a date because that's, you, otherwise you're going to have sex on the mind. And so I would do all the little, little tricks, all the different things. And uh, it just, you know, of course it, it, it wasn't helpful. And so my sexual confidence was very low, and it, it messed with my self-esteem outside of the bedroom, too. And that was my experience for many years. It was just up and down. Sometimes I would feel okay. Other times I would feel less than. Sometimes I would feel on top of the world, and then I would feel at the very bottom. It was just up and down and up and down. And so what helped me? Because right now I'm in a very, very different space. Very different space because a lot of healing has happened. A lot of healing. You know, and I, and I, I, I say the word transformation and I say that word a lot. Um, when you really understand what that word, to transform, right? Like that's, that's like a, a caterpillar going to a butterfly. Like there's a complete transformation that happens. And that is how I characterize my relationship towards sex, my relationship towards, towards myself as a sexual being. It was a transformative one. And there's another number of things that helped me, and I'll start with just really the most, um, I think the most powerful. That was having partners who held a space for me to work through my challenges. So that looked, that looked like, you know, being able to have sexual experiences with women who also viewed sex, like one of the purposes of sex, uh, as healing. Right? It wasn't, we weren't there to just, you know, get off, have orgasms. Stress relief, pleasure. That wasn't the purpose. That was the purpose back in the day for me. And so the premature ejaculation and the anxiety and the fear and the shame was around this idea that, well, the purpose of sex is for both of us to feel good and I'm not able to make her feel good, so I'm less than a man. But as my relationship towards sex evolved and I recognized that that's not the purpose of sex, the purpose of sex is healing, manifestation, joy. So then to have partners and to find partners and to grow with partners that also held that purpose of healing and they created a space for me to step in and work through these challenges I was having, the challenges in between my ears. That was huge for me. Huge for me. You know, like it was Sarah, just her being incredibly patient, you know, allowing me to go slow, allowing me to talk about what was coming up. And I would talk during sex. I would talk during sex, like this is, this is what's coming up right now. I would also talk afterwards, kind of like a debrief, you know, like, hey, this is what I was feeling, and I was feeling this, and then that's why I did that. And they would say, oh, wow. And all through the process, Sarah would affirm me, and the other women that I was experiencing this healing with would affirm me. So having those partners, having a partner who held that space for me to work through my challenges was instrumental to my healing. But there was other things too. There was other things. So there's some stuff that helped outside of the bedroom. And for me, just like Jason in the article, talking about what I was experiencing was very healing for me. And it was incredibly scary, incredibly scary at first, just sharing with other people the sexual confidence challenges that I, w- that I had. And what resulted from those challenges. Incredibly scary. Are you kidding me? Like, ridiculous. Any, like, especially if I talked to men. I was more comfortable talking to women about it. But when I would talk to men, it was like, I felt that I was projecting my judgments. You know, my self-judgments, I was projecting onto them. And so as I was sharing what was going on, I believed that they were having an internal conversation. Like, this dude's not a real man. But you know what? I talked about it anyway. And just like Jason in the article, I sought out people who could hold a powerful space. I developed friendships and relationships with men who I could talk to this stuff about. 
Because some men in my life, I wouldn't be able to talk to it about because the maturity on it was low. So I needed to find men who I could talk to this, you know, about this too. And having those relationships and investing in those relationships is so important and has been so important because I continue to have conversations with those men. I continue to share, hey, this is what I've been experiencing. Have you ever experienced this? And I can't tell you enough. I can't stress enough, like, how, how closed off I was to all of this stuff. Talking about it, you know, asking questions. I would never ask a question to another man about something sexual. Never. But I realized that that's how healing happens. You can't keep the stuff in. So that was one of the things that helped me as well. And the final thing that, that helped me was really just recognizing that my own shame and my, my fears and my judgments, it was creating... That, that closed feedback loop, what Jason in the article calls, where is it? He says, I, don't, I can't remember where it is. But it's just that, that, that loop where you feel ashamed. Like for me, I was ashamed and fearful, which caused low performance confidence, right? Which then impacted how I performed, which made me ashamed and fearful, which caused low performance confidence. It was that loop. And once I kind of understood that that's what was, what was going on and I recognized like that loop was, was happening to me, then I could do things to interrupt it and to break it. Because that loop had to do with my internal conversation and my stories. The things that I was making true. Right? And once I became aware of that, then I would step into a sexual experience and like in the moment, I would, I would almost have this like out of out of mind experience where I was almost viewing my thoughts and aware of my thoughts as I was stroking, right? Like literally like as she was on top and moving and I'm, I'm feeling myself like I'm, I'm there in my mind thinking, oh, this is the thought that will lead to me feeling like I have to come, like catching it. That sort of awareness that I, I learned to develop was, was so instrumental in me being able to do something about it and me being able to ultimately heal. So I just named three things that really helped me. Having those powerful partners who were able to hold a space for me to heal. Having conversations with other men and other people where I could share what I was, what I was going through and talk about it. And then recognizing some of the things that were happening as a result of my, my, my beliefs, those, that feedback loop. And being able to catch it in the moment and see it like happening. Oh my gosh, that was it. Those three things right there led to massive, massive healing for me when it came to my sexual being, my relationship towards sex, my relationship towards myself, how I viewed myself as a man, my relationship with my penis. It helped heal so, so much of that. So I just want to close this off with a couple of things that you all can do. If you, you know, haven't gotten enough uh, 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 action items already. Um, the first being, just go read the article. That's the most basic thing for everybody. Just go read the article. Go read the article and sit with it for a little bit and see what comes up for you. Simple action item right there. Now, men, if you're feeling you know, the way that Jason was feeling in the article or feeling the way that I, I was when I was describing things, then again, go read Jason's article and then I truly, truly believe that having people to, to talk to is, is going to be so important. So important. Because it's our nature to just want to close off and keep things to ourselves, especially when it comes to sex. You know, sex, money, religion, those are the things that people don't want to talk about. But if there's some sort of trauma, lowercase t trauma or capital T trauma that you've experienced, it's not going to go away by you thinking about it. Or refusing to think about it. It does not go away. It does not. So you need to go seek out people to talk to. And you might have to search a bit. Right? You might have to search. You might have to go to some meetups. You might have to put yourself out there. You might have to go and, and research some, some groups on Facebook. And put yourself out there. You might have to be like, you know what? I'm going to talk to people in my life right now. I've never talked to them before. But I'm going to see. Can they be the men to hold space for me? You might have to put yourself out there, guys. Also, have conversations with your partner. If you're in a relationship right now and this stuff is happening in your relationship, have a conversation about it. Talk to your partner. And then finally, be more kind to yourself. 
You know, remember that feedback loop. That thing is a motherfucker. Right? And any judgment and shame and and anger you have towards yourself, it's just going to feed that loop. So be more kind to yourself and recognize that, you know what? Healing is possible. You can get to another space with it. And just hold that space for yourself first and foremost. Now, women, if you have a partner that feels this way or a man in your life that you know, maybe you know that they've felt this way or you just want to you know, be able to toss some, some powerful material their way and maybe they are interested or not, the first thing is, you know, again, read the article for yourselves and put yourselves in the man's shoes. You know, just try to understand this experience, the erectile dysfunction experience or the premature ejaculation experience, or the performance anxiety experience. That's, that's huge, you know? That's that empathic listening or that, 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 that empathy, like being able to put yourself in another person's shoes. So, you know, give that a try and see if like, oh, okay, wow, you know, I see it from, from a different angle now. Like, it makes a little bit more sense. And then the second thing, like, this is, if this is happening for you in, a, in, in your relationship, like, you know, hold space for them. Like learn how to hold space for your partner. Learn how to hold space for your partner and recognize that it might take time. You know, it might take a lot of time for that person to feel comfortable sharing any of this with you. Remember, go back to the article. 25% of men would prefer to break up with you than to seek any sort of treatment. So if you're reading this article or listening to this podcast and you're a woman, you're like, this is my, my dude. This is my husband. This is my boyfriend. I got to go talk to him about this. And you just want to go and jump and talk to him. Guess what? You might scare that dude so much that he will run the opposite direction because this might be the very last thing he ever wants to talk to you about. So you got to learn how to create that space. You know, and the way that you create space and you create trust is you make those trust deposits in their tank. And one of the ways you can do that is for you to share, open up yourself. You know, share what's going on with you. Be vulnerable. So women, part of this, part of you being able to hold that space for a man is you working on your own sexual healing so that you're not bringing any disempowering stuff into the bedroom or into the conversation. So look at your own unhealed sexual traumas. Look at your own unhealthy sexual attachments. Are you stifling your own voice in the bedroom? How can you really connect with your own sexual power. Work on you and then hold the space for him to work on him. And when you have two people that do that, it is an incredibly beautiful thing. And I say that because that's what Sarah and I have done, right? Like Sarah ha- had her fair share of, of sexual traumas that created all sorts of stories, all these different things that she was making true in herself and a lot of fears, and she brought them into the relationship just the same way that I brought all of mine into the relationship. And so in order for either of us to be able to hold space for one another, we really had to work on ourselves. We really had to be bold enough and courageous enough and vulnerable to talk to people, to have conversations. Right? And then to be able to hold that space for one another so that we can heal sexually. And it's happened both ways. I've held space for Sarah during lovemaking, for her to heal through things. And she's held space for me to for me to be able to heal through things. That's how both people in the relationship can elevate themselves. So this has been a really beautiful, honest, hopefully eye-opening conversation. Um, I know I got a lot out of reading Jason Rogers' article. I was like, man, thank you for putting this out there. Just thank you for being bold and putting this thing out there and having this conversation. And I'm, I think it's awesome that Men's Health published this because this is a part of men's health. This is a part of, of all of our health and wellness, the sexual energy, the sexual conversation, because it impacts every other area of life. And when you start to experience healing in this area, you'll be so amazed at how that healing flows and ripples into the other areas of your life. You know, for example, if you're the type of person who's just never expressed themselves fully in the bedroom, never really asked for what they wanted, never really spoke up for themselves and say, maybe I don't want this. As you work on that and as you begin to grow that muscle and and heal 
any potential disempowering conversation that you've had about yourself or your own worthiness and grow in your boldness and your confidence and your clarity to speak your voice, I guarantee you it's going to spill out into the rest of your life. That's, that's the way that it works because in the bedroom, this is like the opportunity for us to be the most vulnerable. I could sit across from you at lunch and have a deep conversation and still not be fully wide open vulnerable. But when we're in bed together and totally nude, right? Like I can still be vulnerable, but it's, it's, it's a little bit more challenging. All this stuff comes up and all this stuff is revealed. And so that's why the bedroom is such a beautiful space for that healing to take place. So I would love to receive some feedback from, from this podcast episode. What came up for you? What things do you, are you going to want, do you want to work on? You know, if any of the action items resonated, which one are you going to do or which one did you do? Whatever your thoughts, anything, I would just love to, 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 to receive some, uh, some feedback from it and just to extend the conversation because that's a big part of, you know, what, the way that we can create healing is to talk about this stuff. So you better believe I'm going to be posting this on the Instagram account. I'll have some conversations about it and, uh, you know, Let's talk Matthew underscore Bivens at Instagram and mattcbivens at gmail.com. And once again, Sarah's putting out this, this really transformational, amazing healing product called Orgasmic Mama. It's about women being able to connect with that, that turned on part of themselves and to use that orgasmic energy, not just in the bedroom, but in the rest of their lives. And a huge part of her program has to do with the healing aspect of it. So if somebody, you know, women, if you're looking for some a, a way to truly take action on this stuff, then consider Orgasmic Mama. You can go to sarahbivens.com slash om, o, or O-M, Orgasmic Mama, O-M, and that's where you can learn about it and sign up because this is, this is real stuff. And if, if, if this conversation today sparked off anything within you, men or women, I highly, highly recommend you do whatever it is you feel you need to do to create some movement and some healing in this area. Don't just listen to this and think that's enough. It's not. It's not. So if you know that you've got some some traumas with a capital T or lowercase t, if you know that you've got some, 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 some baggage that you bring into your relationships or into your bedroom, if you know it and you listen to this, this episode because you know it, it's up to you. Like You have a responsibility to yourself to do something about it because just listening or just reading is not going to be enough at the end of the day. Like it's, it's, you know, great to learn and to be exposed to these things, but you need to now go and participate and be proactive in your own healing, in your own transformation. And so that's the biggest call to action I just want to put out there for everybody. Whatever it looks like for you, go and now be proactive. So thank you again for tuning in. If this is your first time, yeah, this was a real one. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. And I'm just inspired for each and every one of you for sticking in this conversation and being a part of this conversation because this is truly transformational this can impact and heal so so many people so so many people so thank you for being bold and and listening and for all the reaching out that i know i know you're going to do thank you for all of that my name is matthew bivens and here is to you having it all Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.